Putin knows that, crucially, Carlson is not a pure journalist. He's a propagandist. He's a sympathizer with Russia. Uh, he doesn't believe in the prosecution of the war. So he knew he was going for a, mm. a favorable interview. So I doubt whether there was stiff conditions set. Vladimir Putin gave an interview to the former Fox News TV host, Tucker Carlson, marking the first time the Russian president has spoken to Western media since his full-scale invasion of Ukraine. In an interview lasting more than two hours, which was, to be honest, heavier on Russian history than anything else, the Russian president spoke at length about the conflict. One of uh, our senior United States senators from the state of New York, Chuck Schumer, said yesterday, I believe, that we have to continue to fund the Ukrainian effort or U.S. soldiers, citizens, could wind up fighting there. How do you assess that? Well, if somebody has the desire to send regular troops, that would certainly bring humanity to the brink of very serious global conflict. This is obvious. Do the United States need this? What for? Thousands of miles away from your national territory. Don't you have anything better to do? You have issues on the border, issues with migration, issues with the national debt, more than 33 trillion dollars. You have nothing better to do, so you should fight in Ukraine? That was uh, President Putin. Uh, and for large parts of it, his interview, Tucker Carlson barely got a word in. Well, is that what it's like if sitting down with Putin? Well, the last Western journalist to do it was the former editor of the Financial Times, Lionel Barber, who joins me now. Morning, Lionel. Morning, Matt. Uh, you said before Tucker Carlson in, in interview, you'd be judging on the quality of his questions. So what? how, how good were they? I'd give him a beta to beta minus. Um, obviously, he was overwhelmed at the beginning by the history lesson, which I heard in part when we got an hour and 40 minutes or so with uh, Putin in the summer of 2019. I think one of the problems is he wasn't able to challenge or follow up on some of Putin's more preposterous comments. And that's either we're talking um, about the run up to World War Two, where he talked about Polish collaboration with the Nazis. Um, well, what about Stalin and Hitler and the Molotov von Ribbentrop uh, agreement, uh, partitioning Europe, and then also, crucially, on nuclear threats. He made it seem as though the West was talking up nuclear threats, whereas he's been the one threatening uh, use of nuclear weapons to intimidate. Uh, so I, I, I think it wasn't a total cream puff interview. He did raise the question of the detained Wall Street Journal correspondent, Evan Gershowitz. So it wasn't totally cream puff, tame but mediocre. OK, in fact, I think we've got the clip of that, of, uh, of Putin saying he's ready to talk about the release of uh, Evan Gershkovich, the, uh, the report from the Wall Street Journal. Let's take a listen. I do not rule out that the person you refer to, Mr. Gershkovich, may return to his motherland. By the end of the day, it does not make any sense to keep him in prison in Russia. We want the U.S. Special Services to think about how they can contribute to achieving the goals our Special Services are pursuing. We are ready to talk. Moreover, the talks are on their way. And there have been many successful examples of these talks crowned with success. So that's what you said about Evan Gershkovitz. Um, Lionel, were there any s clues to the direction, the possible resolution of the conflict in Ukraine? Putin suggests that he is willing to negotiate. He did not set out any terms at all, essentially put it on the West. He says that Ukraine's artificial state, it's a satellite of America. So it's, it's up to them uh, and we're ready. Uh, one important point, he said, well, stop the weapons supplies. We all know right now there is a very important aid package which is stuck in Congress held up, held hostage by Trump Republicans in the House of Representatives. So that was a clear signal, don't bother with that. Uh, I, I think this was all about weakening Western resolve, making clear we're not prepared to give an inch and you can come to the table. And just finally, Lionel, what hoops will Tucker Carlson have had to jump through? How, how difficult, what were the conditions that you had to go through to get your interview? And what do you think Tucker Carlson had to do in order to get it given that 
He is the first person, first Western journalist to speak to Putin since he invaded Ukraine. Matt, I don't do conditions. We don't. We didn't have any conditions ahead of the interview with the, with Putin in 2019. I can't speak for Carlson. <laughs> I suspect he gave some idea of the questions, um, but the fact that he obviously thought that, that some areas were off limits uh, in the scope of the questions, it, and also Putin knows that crucially, Carlson is not a pure journalist. He's a propagandist. He's a sympathizer with Russia. Uh, he doesn't believe in the prosecution of the war. So he knew he was going for a, a mm. favorable interview. So I doubt whether there was stiff condition set. Lionel, really good speech. You're really fascinated in that. Lionel Barber, the former uh, editor of the Financial Times, who was the last Western journalist to speak to Putin, uh, reflecting on uh, Tucker Carlson's uh, interviews there.